scientific theory, but one that occurs in paranormal circumstances with all the same indicators of supernatural activity except the alleged perception of non-intelligence of exactly the same phenomena that in other circumstances would be interpreted as paranormal. The subjective nature of this d distinction process we talked about uh, in, in another uh, segment. So cumulatively speaking, we talked about these different things. Save time by not re uh, rehearsing them. Number eight. Did you know that according to some folks, the phenomena of period dress did not start occurring until 100 years ago? Prior to that, ghosts were seen in contemporary garb. If one saw a ghost in 1905, they are dressed in the garb in 1905. I don't have any way of verifying this is true. I've tried, so I offer this more suggestive than as, quote, evidence. But if it's true, then it's quite significant. And there's a precedent for it, by the way, uh, in the UFO phenomenon, which is true, as we'll see. It is because of this precedent that I decided, decided to even include it. If ghosts are, if, are intelligent and residual energy, um, then they must have occurred throughout human history in similar fashion. If these are manifestations of non-intelligent residual apparitions, then something has happened that shouldn't have happened 100 years ago. Victorian women in white dresses started appearing, and countless other apparitions in period dress. Perhaps the devil knows something. There's something romantic about a Victorian ghost woman or uh, Civil War soldiers. If he can appear again as an angel of light, then appearing as anything else would be a snap. Anything. I saw a demonic cat in one location. It was the ugliest cat I've ever seen. It appeared to be hyperventilating as I approached it. It was paralyzed with fear. And it looked as if it was going to have a heart attack. So Satan's very smart and the ultimate opportunist in learning a good thing when he sees it to deceive people. <clears throat> it sounds like intelligent changing a strategy to fit our expectations and his desires. See, folks like their Victorian ghosts. It's eerily similar to the early UFO sightings as saying they were from Mars, Martians. But as our technology got more advanced, somebody realized that this was becoming implausible. It was much more exotic and harder to falsify to say they are from the outer reaches of the galaxy. It has all the signs of intelligent deception, and since most activity is said to be residual, then non-intelligence cannot change its M.O. a hundred years ago. This is further intelligence that the residual speculation is implausible. Non-intelligence is not going to decide one day to start appearing in period dress because by definition, non-intelligence can't just decide anything. Based on the UFO alien encounters, there is no doubt in my mind that the true alien appearing activity is demonic in nature in terms of their anti-Jesus, anti-hell message and actions. It is evident that this is yet another scheme of the evil one, just as our ghosts and residual energy haunts. Number nine, residual energy haunts are not reproducible in the lab. You know, one would think that a surface that contains the stored energy could be removed and stimulated in some fashion in the lab because it's a loop. Or think of material taken from a residual haunt used to build another structure, which is then said to result in being residually haunted as well because of using those materials. After all, it is said that lightning or EMF pumps ionize the air and make replay likely. Has anyone on site or in the lab been able to electrically stimulate this energy surface and cause it to replay? The problems with testing it on site is that at the first sighting of activity, one would be tempted to call it residual, uh, residual in order to produce desired effects. In other words, it's not a controlled setting. Any non-reproducibility is normally considered at best seriously problematic, and at worst a death blow to a theory in science. It is assumed that a theory is reproducible in the lab if it is true. This is about the third or fourth time that the same point has been made, but in regards to different anomalies. But this is residual energy, and it seems nobody messes with it. Ten, 
utter unpredictability. The vast majority of traumatic situations that should that should lead to residual energy haunts do not. Trauma of countless varieties and intensity occur every day across every city. If we assume the trauma theory in spite of number point number two mentioned earlier, then one would expect all significant trauma to send out emotional psychic energy which would result in imprinting on the surroundings. Residual halts occur in all types of physical environments and not just with limestone. There is no surface or kind of substance that has been isolated as a cause causes. I go into that in my last chapter. This is being made into a book. Um, my point is this. If a theory is true, truly scientific in nature, if it is true, then it should be predictable. But in this case, it is utterly unpredictable as to the if, what, when, where, and how of which events will be recorded and played back. There is no simplicity to this theory at all, just one anomalous complexity after another. This is a distinct argument from the lack of mechanism, number three, that has to do with the inability to explain how the processes works. This has to do with if and when the process even occurs, despite serious trauma. <clears throat> now, this is a total lack of predictability. You know, even in places where there is intensified horrible trauma on a daily basis, in a place that has limestone, in a place like prison, there should be much more residual energy and haunts than there are, according to the res this theory. Um, Especially a part of the reason it was positive was because the prison was made of limestone. <clears throat> a place like that should be crawling with residual energy haunts. It would seem that someone is choosing which trauma produces this effect. But in residual theory, there is nobody there to choose which event makes an imprint. And choosing is obviously intelligent activity. One could go further and say that some of the very worst traumas have not produced any residual haunts, even in limestone environments or in any or in different kinds of environments. The contrary theory can, that is my theory, demonic theory, can exp easily explain why some events are causing some issues and others are not. It's called intelligent intervention. A basic component of a theory passing the muster of scientific method and becoming accepted as scientific is a simple test of predictability, yet one of the hallmarks of this theory is its sheer unpredictability. Nothing about this theory is explainable. Every aspect of it is shrouded in mystery and contradictions. Along these same lines, there is, as I said, no substance that has been isolated as the photographing element or surface. Residual haunts due to their alleged frequency are found in every mineral rock surface imaginable. So forget limestone. 11. Have you ever heard of a perpetual motion machine? If you have, it's not because you've seen one. <laughs> they are an impossibility in the world that God has made. Why? Due to friction, gravity, and especially the second law of thermodynamics, the energy will eventually wind down. The energy has not been destroyed but it has been changed. These inventions have always been a failure and always will be a failure. My point is this. The theory of residual energy, as usually proposed, is essentially a theoretical model of a perpetual motion machine. As Ms. Jones said, the residual energy will continue to loop, perhaps perpetually. Of course, nobody has any clue as to how many volts of psychic emotional energy is emitted in a trauma, as if this could be measurable, but the human body has relatively little energy in it compared to the tasks that are said to be performed in a residual haunt. How much energy is needed to create a hologram on steroids, which is what many of the apparitions appear like? In fact, they are not holograms because they are much more sophisticated. In many cases, actual human bodies are generated, which can be touched. In addition, consider how much problematic it is to visualize this happening for centuries. You have energy expending itself through self-exertion 
due to cue and response over and over. The cueing process is just that, a cue to prompt the loop. But there is nothing in an anniversary to refuel, refuel the energy. Supposing, for argument's sake, that energy did cluster photographically on, the, photographically on the surface, it seems to me that after just one exertion, the amount of usable energy would have been depleted. Verbal loops are energetic enough. You know, people saying things, or energy. But think of the energy needed to create a visual image or body. Unless this energy field is being resupplied with new usable energy, then it would seem to me that the notion of residual energy haunt is a variation of a perpetual motion machine. Robbing energy from batteries would seem to be a very insufficient amount to project a visual apparition. Hence, it is impossible. And in order to avoid this dilemma, yet another ad hoc hypothesis will need to be added to make this model work. If one proposes lightning, as Tim Yohead does, as energizer, then why is there residual energy and haunts happening frequently worldwide in places where lightning has not occurred in many months or even years? It would seem that these energy clusters are re-energizing themselves, which is the same as postulating perpetual motion and ignoring the second law of thermodynamics which is in our next segment. A sub-point is it would seem that there is no aspect of this process that's actually measurable. <clears throat> Twelfth and lastly, the Q problem, C-U-E. It is common in discussions of residual energy and halts to state that certain anniversaries of the event cause it to loop. I have a problem with that. Anniversaries are memorable dates, and intelligent entities like humans or demons remember dates. Rocks and energy cannot remember anything. Even if, for argument's sake, we assert that rocks can project images, they can't remember anything because they have no conscious awareness. Rocks are inanimate. Electric, electric energy is inanimate. Is it being suggested that this psychic energy is alive? can remember events and act upon itself to reanimate, reanimate and loop. Again, we are anthropomorphizing energy. How many times have we heard someone state that looping energy occurs on the anniversaries of the trauma? Fine. Explain to me, please, how an anniversary can trigger energy to loop. Since it is a date, it has no fingers to press anything. It takes energy to trigger energy, and anniversaries have no energy because they are nothing, ontologically speaking. An anniversary is not a thing, ontologically speaking. It is nothing. It is no thing. It is, has no being. My birthday is in two days, and it's significant to me, but the date of my birthday is not a thing. The date itself is nothing in terms of being. Ontologically, it is literally no thing. Of course, of course it has significant emotional value, but that can only be recognized by intelligence. But since it is ontologically nothing, how can it act as a cue or trigger for energy to loop? Nothing cannot create something. As the Latin phrase ex nihil, nihil fit, from nothing, nothing comes. So we have what appears to be spontaneous generation of energy occurring as well, which is logically and physically impossible. Something would have to be its own cause. It have to be and not be at the same, same time. How can an anniversary which has no being cause a physical object to re-energize and loop? It is so easy to say the anniversaries cause energies to loop, but it's quite another to show how it can cause it to happen. It makes much more sense to posit an intelligent spirit or demon who knows the date of the suicide and loops the action on that date. It avoids all the spontaneous generation problems. You know, there's a reason I took the time to lay the foundation in the first two chapters, and I'm glad I did. Because the more I look at this notion, the more it seems that folks are assuming 
that nature is at least semi-divine, animism, and modern garb. How else can we explain this, all this ability uh, being attributed to rocks? So you have no evidence for the theory, no correlation of the data evidence to the theory, no mechanism to explain the theory, subjects being filmed with no background scenery, non-intelligent residual entities deciding they want to change their clothing habits, just non-producible in the lab, unpredictability, no common photographing substance, it acts like a perpetual motion machine, and universities have no ability to cause looping. The anomalies are no longer anomalies. They are hard evidence that this theory needs to be rejected and a new paradigm adopted. Evil intelligence. Occam's razor states that the simplest explanation that explains the phenomena is to be preferred, and residual energy is neither the simplest explanation nor does it explain the phenomena. Uh, stop there.